Well, I think it's not surprising that our you know, federal IT professionals are concerned about the frequency, the number, and the sophistication of the attacks that they're experiencing. You know, in our recent survey that we did with those federal IT security professionals, 74% um, of them thought that they would come under some kind of attack this year with regards to critical infrastructure. 33% um, of those people you know, are reporting that they've already experienced a, an attack. So, you know, that's very compelling information. These people aren't, you know, guessing. They're really speaking from firsthand experience. And I think the nature and the sophistication of the attack is what really has people concerned. Um, you know, we've evolved from worrying about, you know, script kiddies and young kids getting, a, you know, um, free tools on the Internet and really kind of playing around to kind of make a name for themselves to that we're seeing really the nature of the threat being well-funded adversaries, but now these are really nation states, all right, terrorist organization, um, specifically targeting, you know, critical infrastructure in the U.S. So I think this isn't, you know, surprising. I think the nature of the attack, you know, I don't know that we will see a conventional war on a large scale, and yet you certainly could see some kind of cyber war taking place. And since these people are really on the front line of that, a lot of this data really suggests that they're already seeing that, and you could call these discovery skirmishes. Um, they're already probing the defenses. They're already trying to put things in place um, if that was ever to escalate to a full kind of cyber war, you know, that these nation states would already want to have done their intel, would already want to have things probed. And certainly these people and the, the U.S. federal IT security professionals are seeing this activity occur right now. So I think the challenge that most people have with compliance is really trying to get their arms around um, continually monitoring those things. All right. If you're adding more technical controls, sometimes you add more technology or complexity to that equation. So I definitely think that there is a relationship between compliance and complexity, um, but it's also really should be driven by the nature of the security threat. All right. If I can't mitigate all the risks in my environment, I have to introduce a new technology, which inevitably is introducing some complexity to that environment. All right. Uh, again, as I kind of mentioned in an earlier question, compliance and security, compliance is still an event, all right, versus uh, security, which is a continual process. All right. So there'll, there'll always be a little bit of a disparity there between those two things. If I need to be uh, introducing some other technology in order to, com to meet those compliance guidelines, then I'm going to need to do that. All right. Compliance is meant to be black and white. If we switch the conversation to risk management, then I have some options in terms of do I add this technology that adds complexity? Do I feel like the risk level is high and I have to mitigate it? Then I have no choice. If my goal is to be 100% compliance and I can't meet that compliance standard with the technology in place, I really don't have a choice and I need to introduce that technology into my environment. So I think that's interesting. I think that's the government acknowledging that critical infrastructure is a target, um, you know, for attack, you know, really by terrorist organizations or by other nation states. So the, the government really, because, uh, you know, uh, private business owns these entities, they have to try to coordinate and work with these organizations. One of the first things it has to do is really the government almost needs to educate them on what is the motivation of these adversaries. Because how do, I, how do I evaluate my security posture and my defensive and I understand what the motivation is? All right, from a business standpoint, people are typically looking for financial motivation. This is a very different kind of motivation. So they're going to need to work you know, together, one that the government is educating on what the motivation is, also trying to collect and correlate what are the attack vectors they're using. So there's a lot of collaboration that has to be done in order for there really to be a meaningful improvement in our security posture. So I think that's an interesting option that the government has. You know, historically they like very clear-cut policies that are very prescriptive. They take the form of compliance. Okay? So if, if their goal is to achieve security, they're really trying to use compliance as the vehicle. Often what happens or where that, that falls down is that 
compliance is an event. It is in a continual process. So until they understand that relationship and they add measures within the compliance framework that call for continuous compliance, they'll never, compliance will never equal security, all right? And if their goal was to achieve security, either they try to talk and educate about what you need to do to be secure, all right, and that's more of a collaborative type forum, or are they gonna go the route of, we're gonna mandate this to try to ensure this, i.e. the form of compliance. In order for compliance to be effective, there needs to be a direct correlation between compliance and security. When we evaluate a lot of the compliance measures, they're asking for good, valid security controls. Typically what people point to as why doesn't compliance equal security, it's that compliance is an event. It isn't an ongoing continual process, and no security professional would ever think they have a good security policy and posture in place if it wasn't continuous in its nature and enforcement. All right? The nature of the threat is changing. You need to be constantly reassessing your environment and mitigating the risk that you're discovering. All right? Those are good security fundamentals. Those fundamentals haven't been applied to the implementation of compliance. So as long as it's still in an event, there'll never be a direct relationship. So the government really has a choice. It'll probably be, you know, are they going to try to go the route of education? and educate people on what are the right things to be doing and hope that uh, businesses adopt those practices? Or are they going to go the route of compliance and try to mandate? Then they're going to need to modify some of those compliance frameworks to include how these things are monitored and reported. Because today they live in Excel spreadsheets and that isn't a dynamically accessible um, you know, data set. It needs to be constant visibility. I'm constantly looking and assessing those controls and making sure they're in place on a continual basis. A lot of the, the, the nature of the attack has changed from script kitties over to more kind of nation state kind of threats, terrorist organizations, those kinds of well-funded adversaries that have patience and time on their sides and even are positioning themselves for a future action, that's a very ad different adversary than we've seen in the past. You know, in terms of how do we increase our security posture, I think, you know, the, the government's way of accomplishing thing is usually a prescriptive mandate. That's, you know, takes the form of compliance. Um, they don't want to leave it to interpretation, so they're being trying to be very clear on what those things are. That's sometimes difficult to um, assess on a regular basis. All right, good security controls always require a continual process be in place to revisit these things. Compliance is still an event. It's still a moment in time. It's a snapshot. It's one data point when in order to answer the question, am I secure, I need a data point every single day. All right, those are very different experiences. And so either compliance needs to change how they needs to be reported on, and it needs to go kind of to more of a continuous compliance process, there won't be a direct correlation between security and compliance. If we want compliance to equal security, we're going to need to adapt a very fundamental security process, which means it needs to be a continuous process. So I think some of the survey you know, results show that, that not everybody feels compliance is going to get us to where we need to be uh, from a security posture standpoint. And so maybe we have to look at that fundamental issue of Compliance is an event, it needs to be a continuous process in order for there to be a direct correlation between security and compliance.